Okay, as I begin this class on the Harlem Renaissance, as my students walk in, I'm going to begin with my anticipatory set because most students know that um, they have read The Great Gatsby and there's also two movies to it. There's an old movie and then there was a remake that was made a few years ago. I'm going to have them listen to a song from the old movie and compare it to another song from the soundtrack of the newer movie. So I will go ahead and play just a little snippet of that really quickly. And this is Bandana Days by Ubi Blake, and this is from the original. And then I'll have them listen to this song from the newer version and then compare the instrumental and the vocal aspects of both songs. So, and this one is from an artist that they should know around this time. And then I'll go into, since this is half lecture, half instrumental class, I'll go into my notes and I'll begin with stating that we're going to talk about the Harlem Renaissance today and that it began in 1918 and lasted until around 1933. And it originally started in Harlem, New York, which not many people realize that was a place, so I'll like, go into that. And the significance of Harlem, New York, includes that it was um, a very big cultural capital of New York City, and it was also a big center of nightlife for them. Um, the biggest cause of this migration is uh, there were large job opportunities in the big city, and so everybody was moving there, and as they were moving, they were bringing in all of their cultural and religious traditions, and a lot of people from the South, especially African Americans, were coming up for job opportunities, and with that, they brought um, different types of music, such as different blues styles, and then they brought in a lot of spiritual music, and with that, they brought the instruments and the style with that as well. Um, during this period, there was still a lot of segregation going on, so the African Americans weren't really allowed to go into the nightclubs that many people were enjoying in Harlem, but in order for them to go in, they had to be an employee, which meant they had to be a musician or a performer for that specific nightclub. And in 1920, this led to the first American-owned record company known as the Black Swan Records. And with the Black Swan Records, the African Americans were able to establish themselves as musicians and begin that Harlem jazz era, which was very influential to the area of Harlem. And then as we go on, I'll talk more about famous Harlem Renaissance musicians. Um, I tried to stay with ones that were you know, generally common knowledge, such as Louis Armstrong and Miles Davis. Um, I threw in a few of them that they may not know, just so it can broaden their mind a little bit. Um, Louis Armstrong was born in New Orleans and moved to Chicago so that he could perform with a fellow jazz musician known as King Joe Oliver. Uh, he was basically the starter or um, the head honcho for the playing of the trumpet and that style of music, and he really got that going. Another one was Miles Davis, who was also a trumpeteer, who got his start with Charles Parker, and Charles Parker was um, a famous saxophonist who's from Kansas City, Missouri, which I found was pretty interesting. He was the leader of the bop music movement, and which is a different style of jazz that they use. There is bop and then cool jazz, which was just described the way that, you know, the jazz sounded and flowed and the different words that went along with that. And then the last person I'll talk to them about is Cab Calloway, who was a band director and a vocalist. He um, was one of the big, like big headliners that people went to go see at the Cotton Club. He is also credited with giving Ella Fitzgerald her first big break, and she is also another famous person that many people in music look up to. The Cotton Club was 
basically a nightclub that people went to, you know, to dance and to listen to this type of music. And it was one of the more famous hot spots of the night scene in New York City. After we go over this, um, I'll continue to talk to them about, you know, more of the history and ask them if they have any questions about, like, where anything else took place and stuff like that. And then I'll go in and have them get their instruments out and I'll play a piece from what's called the fake book, which has a lot of different styles of music in it. And we'll play a small piece from the Harlem Renaissance, which since I'm not in a classroom and I don't have instruments with me, we're not going to be able to do today. But I'll have them do that and we'll work on that for the last half of the hour. And then as they're putting their stuff away, I'll go through and talk to them and be like, okay, now, um, what are some things that stuck out to you in the lesson and notes? And who are, I'll just have them name off as their exit ticket, name off three influential people of the time and maybe what they played and the instruments used. And then for their independent work, I'll have them take the sheet music home that we worked on and just look at the key signature as part of their homework for the evening. But that would be our jazz history lesson and that would generally take another day after that so we can work on some more instrumental fundamentals and then we would later move on to the next lesson which would be swing and that would conclude the lesson.